For a long time, I've always thought, you know, for medicine, you can augment everything that we're doing from a provider's time to the medical records with AI, with technology. But I think we haven't really done it in a way that can really accelerate the way we're looking at it. Um, I myself, unfortunately, for my first pregnancy, I lost the baby at nine months. So I'll go through some of those difficult times, but at the same time, I want to talk about how I would have thought technology would have helped me. Um, so I'll go through some of these ways that technology can not only support the way uh, women carry their babies, um, giving them information about what stage, what uh, things they should be looking out for, like movement, and all of that. So I'll start by saying social determinants of health. Um, I'm you know, educated, I'm lucky as a physician, but 68% of consumers have at least one social determinant of health issue. That could be lack of healthcare education, lack of resources, lack of even transportation getting to and back from the hospital. So a lot of those things that we're thinking AI can support is by doing virtual care. People have known during the pandemic, there's been a lot of delayed healthcare. What does that mean? Lack of colonoscopies, mammograms, cancer screens, and we've seen the CDD is re reporting um, our inability to try to get people back into the hospital system the same way. So I've been really interested in Everly Health because it's a home diagnostic company. This whole conversation though is not about Everly Health, it's about how we can think about AI and in healthcare. So the way I think about it though, uh, especially is with SDOH, stresses are nearly 50% or more likely to uh, cause people to, with SDOH, suffer from additional chronic diseases over 2.3% uh, times more likely to rate their health as fair or poor. So what does that mean? That ultimately means that a lot of people that do not have access to resources and whatnot just perpetuate the cycle. So how do we think about AI to support this? I believe in the quadruple aim. So enhancing the patient experience, improving population health, reducing costs, and improving the work life of clinicians. So I'll talk a bit about this. So enhancing the patient experience. What can we do? So many things. When I was pregnant, could I have been told that, hey, you're, you're not feeling movement. You may want to just drink some orange juice. There are so many apps right now with fertility that they're tracking. You can input your own symptoms and you can figure out if someone is really you know, high risk or not. There's ways that you can comb through medical records using NLP. A lot of this I'll talk about too, which is how do you look at medical records, unstructured and structured data, to pull that in and give the clinician the insight that this baby is not moving very well. You may want to get her to the hospital sooner and faster. Um, I end up losing the baby, unfortunately, but I look back and I have three wonderful children and I think to myself, could technology have enhanced my ability to track what was happening? I'm a physician, for God's sake, and how did I miss my own diagnosis? So. One way that I think patient experiences can improve is, of course, virtual health. There's a lot of really interesting exploration right now with virtual health and recognizing faces. A lot of phy uh, physicians can't necessarily diagnose something called congenital diseases, which is genetic diseases that if you combine like a little bit of blue hint in your eyes with some facial features, you can actually diagnose early congenital heart disease or other things that are associated with symptoms. And so I believe that AI can actually combine these medical records symptoms that parents are explaining, things that people are feeling, and then ultimately come to a diagnosis faster and better. I also think improving population health. So I come from Anthem, uh, my prior job, where I worked, uh, which is now called Elevance. We looked at 45 million members for covering them for prior authorization. So if someone wanted an MRI or a um, knee surgery, you had to go through multiple steps. A physician would have to fax something, and I know even in healthcare these days, I can't believe we're still faxing, but yes, would have to fax, fill out a form and say, this patient re requires an MRI because they have had five weeks of physical therapy, it hasn't worked, it hasn't improved, they sprained their uh, knee, it makes sense for them to get an MRI. Sometimes that gets delayed for months. So what we could do is comb through medical records, get all of that information, and send it to the payer. So at Anthem, that's what we did with AI. We were able to basically look at what a physician could do, what a nurse would do to triage all this, streamline the medical record keeping system, and then it would flag all the medical records that said, this page on page six said that the patient had five weeks of medical pain that was, would qualify for this MRI, in addition to getting an x-ray that didn't show anything, in addition to several other things, so it's guidelines. Um, so population health, improving the way that we look at mammograms and, and colonoscopy is something that, of course, with AI, with imaging, is starting to become a huge thing. Um, we've seen a lot of pe uh, people being able to detect breast cancer much earlier on. 
things that physicians wouldn't be able to see year on year on year, but an AI system could see changes over time.